Apex Machining Services in Oldbury. Now, this is the first foray into sliding head work. Right. Andy, first of all, though, a bit of background on the company, please. Okay, the company's been going since about 1980. Uh, it was set up by a time-served engineer. I bought the company about three years ago. In fact, this week is my third anniversary owning the company. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I bought the company to heavily invest. It was already a, a very, very nicely run company. And I spent about £450,000 investing in um, six or seven pieces of equipment since I've been here over that three year time. Okay. But it was milling and fixed head work, is that right? Yes, it was um, um, all CNC, um, milling work. We have seven um, machining centres now. It was fixed head lathe work. Uh, we'd made the furrow already into driven tooling, uh, which we learned quite a bit from that. Uh, and the back end of last year, I made the decision to invest in our first sliding head. Okay, why? Well, I was looking at quoting on pieces of work for relatively high volume parts, um, some complex, some more simple, and I wasn't competitive, and I thought there was some different technology going out there in the market. So I had a look at uh, various different sliding heads um, and decided to do that to compete into, in new markets, effectively. Okay, so Warren from Citizen reared his, reared his head and here, here we are now. That's right, yeah. I think it was probably the easiest phone call Warren's taken. I called him up and said I was already decided to buy a sliding head. Just come and talk to me about Citizen. Um, so I looked at Citizen and the rest on the market uh, and I really decided on Citizen for their, their after-sales support. Right. Warren assured me there'd be significant after-sales support to help me and actually that has proven to be true. Okay, when you say after-sales support, what sort of things do you mean? Yeah, well, for us, buying a, a sliding head, it was a new way of working. Uh, definitely a new way of working. Uh, we're very familiar with fixed heads, very familiar with uh, driven tool, programming. We were all fanatic. What we wanted is someone's going to hold our hand with a new machine, a new way of working, uh, a new control, um, and that's what, that's what we needed. Okay, and here you are up and running, fantastic. I mean, you're really over the moon about it. The machine itself, it's the L20. Just tell me a little bit about the machine, please. Yes, it, it's the L20. Uh, Citizen do the L20 and the L32. I decided on the L20, it was a sweet spot for most of my, um, most of my components. Uh, we went for a, a top of the range model, um, and really significant thing for me in layman's terms is that I could mill and drill and tap in any direction in perpendicular into a bar, which was significant for me in terms of some of the complex jobs that I was doing and wanted to get into as well. So when you say uh, um, drill, mill in any direction, be it full B-axis? Yeah, a, a B-axis. We've got four main driven tools on the main axis, and at the B-axis we can bring in to spindle one and to bindle, spindle two with driven tooling as well. And that's significant advantage for me for some of the complex parts. Okay, now it's made you a lot more competitive. I mean, you were competitive before, a lot more competitive. Bringing in work from overseas as well, though? Yeah, what I found was that I'm getting quotes on batches of work, 10,000, 15,000, items that I wouldn't have seen probably even this time last year. At the back end of last year, I seemed to get more and more quotes. Uh, and I've been told by my customers that these are people on sourcing items that previously would have gone to the Far East and Eastern Europe. So you can get compet competitiveness and quality? Competitiveness and quality. Uh, we've always, uh, my company's always succeeded on quality and service. Um, cost is always significant, but I find cost is often forgotten if the quality and service is there. Uh, what I'm finding here is the quality has been spot on and holding complex jobs to microns is something that a traditional machine would do, but you'd have to have it manned permanently to enable that. It wasn't slipping out of tolerance. Okay, in terms of, you say about manned machining, this will run up unmanned the whole weekend, but you've also gone to help that bar feed. Yeah, so we have a three metre bar feed. The standard uh, one metre magazine bar feed we have just wouldn't be able to feed the beast as quickly uh, as it needs to be fed. Uh, I've run this machine overnight, I've run it over the weekend. Um, one of my operators will often come in over the weekend and, and replenish the bars. We've got a, we're in for a three metre bar feed, which is really standard on a, on a sliding head on a citizen just because the speed that it operates at and it really does chew through the bars when it's working. What I also want to go back to is the control because gen your FANUC across the machine shop this is a slight change so that comes down to sales support as well? Yeah so we, we were FANUC um, and we could have had a sliding head the citizen with FANUC but actually when I looked at the Mitsubishi the control that it gave us uh, when we looked at the wizard you know it's a new way of working I didn't want to stay with our old ways of working um, and we've actually adapted to it quite well. Uh, we've had significant support and training from Citizen, which has been really helpful. Um, I can ring them up at any time. So I've got a programming problem, can you look at this? You send in the program and they'll send it back corrected. If you have a fault coming up that you're not, you're not sure about, you know, rather than looking through the manuals, you can call them up straight away and they'll help you over the phone. And that's, that's been really useful for me because this was a big investment, massive investment financially, significant investment in time and personnel. And if I hadn't have had that support, I wouldn't be able to have that return on investment that we're now seeing.
Okay, what I'd like to do now, Andy, is look at some of the components you can now manufacture. Okay, so this machine's giving you competitiveness and flexibility, so what I want to do is actually see some of the components, please. Sure, well, th these are the important parts to it all. So there's, there's a range of components here. Um, these two, as an example, were parts that I, were all, I was already doing, and they would take me three, maybe four operations to actually complete these. Uh, I'm now able to do them in one operation, and they're coming off complete, and that's significant given the amount of threading internal work, um, the, the cross um, drilling going on in that, the hexagon work, and then the turning and tapping work on the other side. So I'm assuming this one as well, with a milling, but also used the B-axis, which you didn't have before. That's correct, yes, and this would have been before. Even with driven tooling, I would have struggled to do this on a conventional machine, and we would have actually would have taken it off the lathe and moved to the machining centers to actually finalize, that, finalize those holes in there, which is double handling and more cost for, for my customers. Similarly with this part, this would have been a two operation part. With the sliding head, because it's always machining close to the actual uh, collet, uh, I can do that all, all in one go. And it finishes the ends off beautifully. I get those spindle two, that's for your charge, uh, rather than having to manually de-pip some work that we would have done on the, on the Music next. to every engineer's ear there, ears there, free of charge. But So the actual finish, the facing up here, done, done a machine where you had to do it manually before? Or? Yeah, that's correct. So I would have had to manually had to um, take the pip off those before. That's now done on spindle two, one, spi one spindle one. Is, is starting off the next new job. Okay. And are these jobs you've won or, or just more competitive? So, um, th so these two jobs, that's maybe much more competitive on them. Uh, these two jobs are jobs that I've won. I wouldn't dream of quoting on a complex part like this before I had the Citizen. I just knew I wouldn't have been competitive on it. With the hexagon flaps on it, with the holes uh, that are on it, um, and the threading work, uh, but now I've won that, uh, batches of 5,000, purely as a result of having the, uh, the Citizen to be able to do that job on. Yeah. Similarly, Similar, yeah, sorry, the smaller part here, yeah? Yeah, similar to this part, I would call it a micro component, really. Um, the tolerance required on that, um, incredibly fine thread, cross drilling, uh, milling on that. Again, I wouldn't have even competed. I wouldn't have even attempted to quote on that with a conventional CNC. With the sliding head, it can do that all in one go, and it comes off complete. And I'm working on batches of 10,000 of these. So, Andy, for an endorsement for Citizen, would you buy another one? Yes, I would. Yes, I would. It's been a learning curve for us, but in terms of the product I can do and the return on investment, absolutely. And I future-proof the area here so that we, we can fit in three or four new machines over the next two years. Andy, thank you very much. Thank you, Colin.